In this tutorial, we are going to go over CX Engage's flow menu. You can find the flow menu by going to the top navigation bar of your tenant and looking at the flow option, flows option. When you go to the flows option and then select the flows submenu, up will come a list of the different flows inside your platform. Note that configuration of any particular flow is itself a pretty long topic, so we're going to be focusing primarily on how a flow is defined inside the platform. If you have many flows, note that you can search for any specific flow in this field. Note also that you can perform bulk operations on a flow. So if I wanted to, for example, do an operation simultaneously on both of these flows, I could enable or disable those flows in bulk. If I were to take a look at any particular flow in question, you'll notice that each flow has one or more versions that are defined for it and an active version. One of the nice things about CX Engage's flow and flow manager is the fact that we will track every version of the flow that has ever been created, allowing you an instant rollback feature, kind of an undo operation, where if you make a change that you regret making, you can roll back to an earlier version by simply hitting the drop down box and navigating to the last known good working version you have. There are multiple kinds of flows in the platform. There are flows that are driven by customer interactions, be they inbound or outbound phone calls, inbound or outbound text messages, Facebook messages, email messages, and so on. There are also flows that focus on reusable bits of code. So if you were to write an integration that would focus primarily on stepping into a database or doing something specific to an operation and you wanted that code to be pushed uniformly to a variety of tenants, you could select that as a reusable flow. Note that we also allow the creation of one or more drafts. To create a new version of a flow, you would go ahead and pick any of the existing versions, including the current one or previous ones. You could either view that flow, and if you view that flow, this is a read-only copy, but it lets you kind of peek in and see what the flow is doing uh, on that particular version of the flow, right? You can view older versions of the flow. You could, from here, create a new draft copy or draft version of the flow if you choose, or you can go back and select a different a version of the flow here to use. You can copy or edit any of the existing versions. So if I wanted to copy this flow to, or this version of this flow to another flow on the same tenant, I can do that by hitting the copy button. And this would spawn a new flow that is a copy of that exact flow. And note that if I hit the edit button, it creates a brand new draft. You will be the only user who is able to see the drafts that you're editing. So it's important to collaborate with your coworkers to ensure that you are in the system and editing different flows at different times. This tutorial will not address in-depth flow creation. We will defer that to a future conversation. In addition, underneath the flows menu, we do have the queues option. In the CX Engage system, a queue is a list of interactions that need to be handled, but not necessarily the agents who handle those interactions. By that, that I mean that every phone call or every email or every chat or really any kind of interaction you create or route in our platform will always end up in a queue. But it is not true that you would ever add a particular user to a particular queue. Instead, you add users to skills or to groups. And the reason for this is when I add a phone call into a queue, as an example, I can then tell that queue to route that phone call to an agent that meets certain criteria. This is an interesting use case because it allows you to create many queues, but perhaps only to have a few groups to manage how agents are a member of those queues, in meaning that you could have many queues for reporting purposes, but simple, easy management that allows you to take an agent into or out of many queues at once with very few clicks. Note that also each queue is able to have multiple levels to it. In this particular case, the queue is looking for an agent that has a skill for 10 seconds. Then after 10 seconds, it's looking for literally anybody logged into the system. And after 20 seconds, it's looking for an individual named here. 
So by teaching the queue to look for an agent who meets certain criterion, rather than teaching the queue to only look for agents who are assigned to that queue, we allow a lot of dynamic flexibility and we allow easier administration because with proper organization, it's very easy to move agents into and out of many different kinds of queues. Another excellent feature of queues is the fact that queues have versions. So if you have a particular queue that you want to run a certain way in the morning, and in the afternoon you want to run it differently, you don't have to worry about taking agents into or out of that queue. You simply can change the active version of the queue. This allows for immediate changes that will impact all interactions in the queue without having to require you to go in and manage bulk groups of agents. And then when the timer has passed and, and the reason for this particular flow has changed, you can go back to the previous flow. It's very flexible, very easy to use. And note that any particular version of the flow includes not only the kind of agent that we're looking for, but also how to prioritize that queue in relation to other queues. So if you have a scenario where some kinds of work need to be prioritized over other kinds of work, we would organize the high priority work into a separate queue from the low priority work, and we would prioritize it using the settings here in relation to the other queues. And again, I can do that while routing it to the exact same agents, so I don't have to change one thing about the agents that I'm working with. I can find the exact same agents, but I can now have a very easy and clean reporting method to say here is my VIP queue or my high priority queue and all of its reporting metrics separate from the less important interactions that I might be handling. To create a new queue, you hit the create button. You give that queue a name. In this case, we'll call it test. Underneath the test queue, you'll notice that I can specify many different kinds of filters. So in this case, under the query section, I can select a filter based upon skill, as I've done here, or I can create a filter based upon a group. And keep in mind that skills and groups are assigned to users in the skills and the group menu. Please see the user management tutorial if you need more information on that. In this case, you'll notice that I am looking for a particular skill, the Nova Texas Alpha Centauri skill. Let's go ahead and remove that and I'll show you that you can be very creative in what you're looking for here. So I can say that Nova Texas Alpha Centauri skill uh, has to be at least or at most or exactly a certain number. And again, keep in mind that I can change this over time. So in this case, I can add this to say the proficiency of at least 10 for the first, I don't know, let's say 30 seconds in this case. Uh, and afterwards, I could then modify that to be a different group. You know, give me any individual who can handle this interaction or give me somebody on a different team or, or even after a, a particular timeout of another 60 seconds here, perhaps routing to a different group or a different team. And again, no matter what, the priority can be set down here inside the platform. Note that you can have an interaction that is assigned a minimum priority and a maximum priority so that if you want to make sure that you're doing a first in first out you set a ceiling value or a floor value for a last in first out or a first in first out routing you also can notice that we will increment the priority of an interaction over time so it might be true that a less important interaction eventually becomes as important as a more important interaction but maybe you want to cap it over time so we never want it to reach past a certain priority, but we want to increase it by one or by a certain amount every X seconds, Y seconds. So it, there's a lot of different ways that we could configure the route to age over time as you need it. A similar process goes if you are creating a version of a queue. So if you wanted to come in and have a particular version of the queue, you can go through and hit the plus button and be presented with a very similar look and feel, focusing on the kind of agent you're looking for based upon a skill or a group membership. Another thing that we can work with inside the flow menu is a collection of media files. So to do that, you can go into the flows and hit the media option. Media gives you a couple of different options to choose from. You can point any particular media file to a URL. You can point any particular media 
to a file that you provide and upload. So in our scenario, a media might be a, hey, thanks for calling or a media might be a message that the call center is closed. These are the actual physical files that will play to your callers when they say hello or the call center is closed, as examples. In addition, you'll notice that we offer a text-to-speech option. So it's a nice thing to think about that if you wanted to have an emergency message, maybe call it emergency message here, and you wanted this message to play, but you didn't want to have to run to your computer and record it, manually, then I can specify a text-to-speech option and I can type an emergency has occurred. Common examples might be that if you have a known system down and you want to, not want to notify your callers but you don't want to have to record a message to make that happen, simply creating a text-to-speech option and typing in the message and referring to that in the flow would be all you need. Note that we do have multi-language support in our media prompt operation, and that different languages, if I were to, for example, select uh, the, U the US English setting, I can also select different voices. Serenova does recommend the use of the Alice voice. The text-to-speech provider has normalized the Alice voice across many different languages, and the use of the man or woman or other voice selections may be a little bit more specific to some languages than others. So it's considered best practice to focus on using the Alice voice in general. Another very common use for flows would be to come into the flow option and go down to the dispatch mapping section. If you go to dispatch mapping, this is where we tell CX Engage what flow should get any specific kind of interaction. In this case, I can tell CX Engage that if an SMS message comes in to a long code, 512-361-4117, that that long code should be redirected to this specific flow. Or if I'm receiving a Facebook Messenger alert on one of my five different Facebook pages, this particular Facebook page should be directed to this particular Facebook flow. So this is a very close to what you might be used to thinking of as a DNS mapping, where you can plug in a DNS and have it route to a particular pilot number. This is what we would do here, except it's not just DNSs. It's also emails, even outbound integrations, or, or other kinds of things that we could run because CX Engage is a true multi-platform, a multimedia platform in, when, in which we handle all media types interchangeably. If you click on any particular phone number, you'll notice that you can select the type of mapping this is. Is it a voice, a message, or SMS, email, or a text chat? Facebook chat. We will also be able to specify whether this is a integration-based direction dispatch mapping or directional dispatch mapping. We can indicate that this particular flow out of all the flows active in the tenant will receive that particular message. 